Hi guys, it's Nina from VR Focus. We are here at level 39, showcasing uh, the great British VR demos. And uh, I'm joined here by... Uh, Sam Watts from uh, Make Real, and I'm the director of Immersive Technologies there. So tell me a little bit what you're showcasing. I see people climbing ladders. <laughs> so this is our, our new prototype, all about training people to work from height safely, uh, which is why they're, they're climbing up but they're, they're hooking off and they're hooking on and they're climbing very slowly and very safely. Okay, but what are they climbing? They are climbing a monopole, and or in English, a mobile phone mask. Okay, right, so who would you be training? Uh, this is for um, uh, one of our new clients who is a global uh, telecommunications company and they wanted to allow other departments to understand the role of the monopole maintenance crew uh, because some people think it's an easy job all they do is climb other people think they're superheroes so it's kind of an outreach awareness program okay. but at the same time it could be used as a, an actual health and safety trainer before you go climb one of these things in real life so have people actually tried it out already people have been trying it out we've been at build london uh, for the past two days before coming here tonight we have an element where you start off on a construction site, sort of a residential build, there's some health and safety information points, and then there's a couple of uh, spot the hazards. Uh, and then we test people's vertigo. So they go up onto a scaffolding on the first floor, and if they start freaking out just being that high, then we don't take them up the pole because a telegraph pole is very, a uh, mobile phone mast is very, very tall. Yeah. Uh, but so far, we have a sort of sweat test of when they finished, when they hand the touch back, how sweaty are the controllers, and then we can tell, you know, how terrified they were or how authentic the experience was. And on what headset is this on right now? How are you training people? We're, uh, we're building uh, with the, the Rift and Touch. Um, obviously, there's no reason why it couldn't be on Vive or HTC. Have other companies approached you after seeing this thinking, wow, this is a great application, can we use it for this, this and this? Um, as with all VR events and all VR demos, uh, when people actually try VR, they suddenly have their heads filled with ideas of things they could use it for. Um, so what we then try and do is work with them in a workshop to narrow that, that focus down to a valid use case, rather than just using VR for the sake of using VR. But yeah, we have a lot of uh, interest at the moment, and it's been our busiest year for VR development. Um, and uh, long may it rain. Uh, what other things are you developing besides this? So, uh, early in the year we released Loco Dojo for Oculus and then for Vive. Uh, we're working out how to get that onto PSVR at the moment. Um, and then we worked with Immersive VR Education. They're busy with Titanic VR, which has uh, had a successful Kickstarter. So they asked us to port um, the Apollo 11 VR experience over to Gear VR. Mm -hmm. And then from Gear VR, we uh, took it over to Daydream, and that came out this week, I think. It came out recently. Yeah. yeah. Uh, go check it out in the Daydream store. Um, we don't get any revenue, but it, we're proud to have seen it work um, from the, the, the very well-respected Rift mm -hmm. experience. One of the developers was shocked that we had managed to recreate it all in real-time 3D on a mobile. Uh, he thought that we would just turn it into 360 video, but no, it's in 3D, heavily optimized, but looks just the same as the Rift experience using the controller, uh, so we're very proud of that work. Where are you based? We're based in Brighton, and uh, the sunny, sunny shores of the south coast. We've grown from our little team of four that we had three, four years ago when we did Radial G, to we've now got a team of about 15. So. Wow. And landscape of VR in Britain changing with everything that's happening right now? There's no one main vertical, um, which is why we do a bit of a scattergun approach and have um, many, many bases covered. So we've got the gaming side with Radio G and Loco Dojo. That gives us public awareness, things that we can actually talk about. Um, and then we have the corporate training side and the health and safety, the construction side training. Um, uh, finance, big data, whatever. Uh, it's all, you know, each one is slowly increasing, increasing. The reports and the coverage of VR dying uh, are absolute nonsense. 
we are so busy with leads and proposals and projects at the moment. So it's a, it's a healthy VR ecosystem right Very now. much so, very much so. And you think people are starting to access VR a lot more, it's going to hit the consumer market finally with maybe some standalone headsets and then content will be everywhere. Hopefully things like the Oculus Go will open up that market a bit more, uh, it will enable um, people to get their, their, their hands on um, easy to use devices, they don't have to worry about having an Android phone or a Samsung a specific model, uh, we don't have to worry about people using the wrong phone with Google Cardboard and getting bad reviews on the app stores, it would just be this pick up and go device. Um, obviously it's still going to be limited by the three DOF controllers but there's a lot of stuff in Gear VR and Daydream is now showing what you can do with a limited controller. Um, and then obviously looking forward to whatever Santa Cruz Prototype 2 ends up being called with full uh, inside app tracking and two six DOF controllers. Whenever that comes out, whenever developers get their hands on it, we'd like one soon, thank you. Um, uh, you know, it's just going to continue uh, gathering pace. The space in Brighton, you do lots of workshops, you do mm -hmm. lots of meetups. How do you feel the environment down south, I suppose, in Britain is doing with regards to virtual reality? Um, I think it's good. I mean, there's still, there's been a few companies over the years who've dipped their toes in and then they haven't quite worked it out. Um, or they've been very well funded and released a single product and then that hasn't really lived up to the budget expectations and then they've closed down. Um, but. Um, we're very, very sensible in, in our approach and we don't suddenly go through a huge expansion process, take on loads of stuff, although 4 to 15 is quite a jump, but that's over four years. Um, and uh, there's other companies who are doing very, very well as well within similar space or marketing space or even the gaming space. So uh, it's a healthy little unit and um, it's a healthy little community and it's still very open and friendly and people help each other and give each other advice and troubleshoot. Um, it's not got to that sort of horrible competitive level yet. Well, that's so. really good to hear for anybody yeah. that wants to get into VR. So is there a website uh, that viewers can go to to find out more about what you guys are doing? Uh, well, our main website is makereal.co.uk. If you're on an Apple device, be careful because it may also correct some mackerel, but it's <laughs> make real. Also, having recently just been uh, listed as the 12th most influential Twitter VR person uh, by Onalytica. If you follow me on Twitter, VR underscore Sam, uh, there's a whole load of information and case studies and white papers and articles that I've written. So. Fantastic. Well, head over to their website, follow him on Twitter, and go to vrfocus.com if you want to find out more about what's going on in Britain with regards to virtual reality. And I'll see you there. Do it.